Hey guys, welcome back to my weekly list where we look at some new mods for Minecraft 1.16.5 on Forge and Fabric. As always, you can grab any of these mods from the description below. I made some new graphics for this video too, and I hope you like them. If you didn't already know, another one of my favorite mods was recently updated to the latest version of Minecraft, and that's Dynamic Trees. It causes trees to look completely different, as they'll now have branches, will fall realistically, and you'll watch them slowly grow from saplings. Dynamic Trees Plus was also released, which is an extension that adds some new species of cacti that can be found in different biomes. It's been great seeing a lot of mods be updated from Minecraft 1.12.2. Thomium starts by adding the new Thomium Ore, which can be used in the creation of a new set of armor and tools, which is only slightly better than their netherite equivalents when it comes to armor. Some decoration blocks include the red carpet, new colored planks, and a doghouse, which can spawn a custom dog. The wooden hammer can break a 3x3 area, the trash can will destroy any items that you'd like, and there's a few other random items too. Flying castles of different sizes will now spawn in your world when using this mod. They're quite high up, so they might be difficult to reach early on in the game. There's a few different styles too, as some will be empty, some will have villagers, and some have custom knights who are hostile. There's also a lot of chests available, so you can get some decent loot. New Mountains mod will add three new biomes, with the first one being the Snowy Mountains, which reach really high into the sky. The desert dunes will instead add some rough and jagged terrain into deserts, making them have large hills. The final biome is the flooded mesa, which will cause the badlands to be deep below the surface. Help Wanted will allow you to craft a villager post from five planks, red dye, and a stick. When placed down, there'll be a small chance for villagers to spawn outside of each morning, or you can speed up the process by placing down an emerald block. It's great for if you need more villagers or if you're trying to create a village from scratch. Cold's Easy Paxel is a new tool which has six different tiers, ranging from wood to netherite. They can be crafted from a shovel, axe, and pickaxe, which are all made out of the same material. Even though they don't use a sword or a hoe, they can still kill mobs and make paths. Cursory will add a lot of new curses to Minecraft, which have a chance of being applied to your items when enchanting. Some of the new curses include the Curse of Explosions, which gives items a chance to create an explosion and harm the wearer. The Inefficient Curse will cause tools to harvest blocks slower. The Loose Curse gives a chance for you to drop tools when using them. And the Hammering Curse can make an anvil fall on you when receiving damage. Smithing upgrades will allow you to upgrade your tools and armor between tiers inside of a smithing table. There are some limitations as you can only upgrade armor between iron and diamond, and the mod makes use of some new upgrading ingots. Spheric features a few new biomes which are mostly of a tropical and magical theme. They have a lot of new blocks, foliage, and terrain. But what really brings it to life are the ambient effects, especially when it comes to sounds. The new Ascenda ores can be mined for gems, which are used in a new set of armor and tools. Block banks are new items which can be crafted and held in your inventory, with there currently being 60 different banks available. When you sneak and right-click, you'll activate autofill mode, which will cause all matching items to enter the block bank, saving a lot of inventory space and allowing you to transport items. Battle Tools adds a lot of content starting with the new Badlands Dimension, which you'll need to create a portal for. Inside, you'll find some new bad mobs such as the Bad Creeper, Cow, Villager, and Spider. Heavy Netherite Armor can be crafted with the new Magic Ingots, as well as some new Swords, Pickaxes, and Axes, some of which have special abilities like calling down lightning strikes. More underground structures will add some new randomly generated structures throughout your world. These include some new dungeons, ore veins, end shrines, travel hideouts, and more. These structures should just make mining underground a bit more interesting. Mine menu also has a fabric port now. When you press the R key, a radial menu will appear on your screen giving you quick access to some stuff. 
there's some differences between the Forge and Fabric versions, as some features are missing from Fabric, as you can currently only select printing and categories as options, so you can currently only quickly paste commands or text into the chat, whereas the Forge version also supports key bindings and item usage. Endless Ocean is now available for both Forge and Fabric, and starts by adding the White Sands biome, which features some new blocks. Also in the mod, you'll find a lot of new fish which have 3D models such as blue tanks, clownfish, batfish, and whale sharks. Some new items include the Pulsar, which calms and heals fish, the fish net, which can be used in catching, and the Tang Barbed Knife, which is poisonous. There are other blocks included with this mod too, like mud, moss, and ocean rocks. Mining Utility adds some new items that help when you're both underground and on the surface. The escape rope feels a little overpowered as you can set a teleport point with the rope and the teleport back there up to 16 times as long as they're in the same dimension. Four mini torches can be crafted from a single torch, making them even more efficient. The mining helmet will give you the night vision buff when you wear it and only requires an iron helmet, two yellow dye, and a torch to craft. The final item is the Rope Ladder, which has a regular and inverted version and allows you to quickly ascend or descend. This mod adds two wind chimes, one which is made out of iron and one which is made out of bamboo. They're both very well modeled and they actually sway in the wind and play sounds, which improve ambience even more. I'd love to see more mods like this in the future. Diable Water will now be available to you, which is going to be useful for different builds and bases. By crafting the Diable Water Bucket, you can apply 14 different dyes to it, change the color, and place it in your world. If you're working on a zombie apocalypse type world, you might want red water for blood or green water for a sewer type build. Another great mod for building is Artificial Foliage. It introduces 17 different colors for leaves, sugar canes, grass blocks, and more allowing you to override a biome's color settings. There's also some new blocks like the leaf carpets and grass slabs, which can help out with some new designs. Board light will allow you to turn most blocks into light sources at the cost of glowstone dust. By right-clicking a block with glowstone dust in your hand, you'll increase its light level by one. If you left-click on it, you'll decrease the light level by one and receive any glowstone dust that you originally used. If you played Minecraft Dungeons, then you'll be happy to know about this mod which adds artifacts from the game straight into Minecraft, which can be found in mansions, dungeons, villages, and more. To use an artifact, you should place it in your hotbar and press right-click while holding it. Some examples are the Death Cap Mushroom, which gives speed and haste, the Light Feather allows you to do an extra jump while mid-air, the Totem of Soul Protection can be used to revive players who die in a small radius, and the Golem Kit will spawn an Iron Golem who will fight alongside you. The Compass Ribbon is a new HUD element which only appears when you're holding a compass and can be seen at the top of your screen. All it does is shows you which way you're facing, as well as all the different directions like North, East, South, and West. That's the end of this week's video. If you want to check out some more Minecraft 1.16.5 videos, then check out my channel as we've covered many more videos for Forge and Fabric. Make sure to subscribe too so that you can stay up to date on my future releases.